my god, her name's Misery. That's tragic. Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today is going to be my February TBR and if it's a bit all over the place, I can only apologise. I have been struggling to know what kind of books I'm in the mood for at the moment. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was having a dilemma because every book I started, I would get like a few pages in, sometimes not even a chapter, and I would like have to stop because I just wasn't hitting the spot. I also am really enjoying the books I'm reading right now and I can't seem to think past these books. So when it came to thinking about what I want to read in February, I was struggling, not because there aren't plenty of books that I want to read, but because I was just, I'm just like, will I want to read that? Am I going to read that? I want to read it at some point. I just don't know if it will be next month. I've made this list of about eight books though. And looking at it now, there's only three out of these eight, which I think have a possibility of me not getting to. And I'll explain why when we get to it, but let's get into it. So I've got a few February new releases that are coming out that I have been excited for for ages. The first one being A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. This has been in my TBR for months and months and months purely because I love the look of the cover so much. The plot also sounds great though. So this book follows Archie Casimir, who is a criminal mastermind and a collector of secrets. And she also runs a tea shop, which by nighttime caters to the vampires in society. However, when this illegal establishment that she runs is threatened, she is forced to strike up a deal with an adversary and recruit some of the city's most skilled outcasts to organize a heist, which will throw her into the midst of a conspiracy and change the world as she knows it. This is a young adult Adult, enemies to lovers romance I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm sold already and I also love a heist it just sounds really really cool really interesting really original and I've never read uh, anything by this author before so I'm excited to see if I gel with the writing style I think it'll be really fun the next book I'm planning to read was one that I was so excited for towards the end of last year it's The Fury by Alex Michalides I really enjoyed The Silent Patient and then I made my 2024 most anticipated reads and I put The Fury on that list and then I went and read The Maidens by Alex Michalides and I didn't get on with it very well unfortunately. So I think I'm pretty much definitely going to be reading The Fury next month still but it's a bit up in the air whether I'm gonna get on with it now that I've read The Maidens and it wasn't as good for me as The Silent Patient. So this book is about an ex-movie star called Lana Farrar who owns a private Greek island and invites a select group of friends over every year but one year is more memorable than the rest because a murder which shakes the world and ends up in all the tabloids takes place there. This book is from Elliot's perspective, who was in attendance on this particular trip, and he is going to reveal the true events of what happened. So this description is really reminding me of Knives Out, Glass Onion. The fact that it's just a bunch of really rich, really privileged people on this private island and a murder takes place. That is pretty much exactly the setup for Glass Onion. And I liked Glass Onion, so I am here for that. It's just going to be interesting whether I'm here for the actual thriller plot of it. Because like I said, I really got on with Silent Patient, but The Maidens was such a disappointment to me, particularly because I thought the main thriller plot of it was just very anticlimactic and a bit of a letdown. But I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna see. The next book is a new release that I hadn't anticipated being this excited for, but it is Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I am currently reading through all of Ali Hazelwood's currently released works for a video in which I am reading Ali Hazelwood for the first time, and I am really enjoying her writing. I was not expecting to get into it as much as I have. I just thought I was gonna make a fun video in which I read one of TikTok's most beloved authors, uh, but TikTok recommendations can be a bit iffy sometimes. Uh, and I think romance as well is so hard to recommend to someone because enjoying a romance is so subjective to someone's personal tastes, but I'm loving it. Just a sneak peek into that video. <laughs> I really like her. So when Bride comes out, I think I'm going to be right on that. I'm going to be reading it. It's her first supernatural romance, 
which is honestly, I'm interested to see how she adjusts her writing style to write a supernatural romance because she's very much into writing her STEM contemporary romance novels and she's very good at it. I am excited. I'm so excited. Anyway, what's it about? I don't even know. I don't even know what it's about. <laughs> I'm just that excited for it that I'll read it. Um, oh my god, her name's Misery. That's tragic. Okay, interesting. So this book follows Misery Lark, who is the daughter of a very high up vampire councilman and she is being forced into a marriage with a very high up werewolf in order to keep a historic peacekeeping alliance going. However, whilst it seems like she is being forced into this marriage against her will, Misery has her own reasons why she wants to marry a werewolf even if it is so far from what she actually wants to do. Like I said, I. I I have no idea what to expect going into this. I really hope it's good. I mean, vampires, werewolves, arranged marriage. It sounds fun. It sounds like it's going to be fun. I just, I'm just so interested to see if she adapts her writing style to fit the genre a bit more or if she's going to keep a contemporary style. Anyway, I'm very, very excited for this one. Next book I'm going to read is Inked Blood Sister Tribe Scribe. Inkblood Sister Scribe. <laughs> the next book I'm going to read is Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors. This is what I'm reading for the book club that I do with my sister-in-law and it was her pick this month. So I actually have never heard of this book before but Becca has really good taste and this sounds really really good. This is a debut novel following two estranged half-sisters who are tasked with guarding their family's magical library who must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of the collection. I think this is going to be quite dark academia, there's magic obviously, I think there's a bit of romance and I think it's going to explore like family bonds and things like that which I love. It seems like it has so many things in it which I will really enjoy and I'm excited that it's a debut. I'm often behind on upcoming authors. <laughs> I'm very much the person who gets into someone like years after everyone else has gotten into them. For example, Ali Hazelwood is currently who I'm into even though everyone has been obsessed with Ali Hazelwood for the past like four years. So yeah, I'm excited that this is a debut author. I really hope that I enjoy the writing. I'm excited to see what this book is about. The next book I want to read came out in January and that is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett, which is the second book in her Emily Wilde series. I read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia for Fairies in January. Uh, it was my first book of the year and I loved it so, so much. So I was excited to learn just yesterday that her second book had already come out <laughs> again with the late to the party calf. So in this book we're going to be following Emily Wilde again of course and Wendell. Wendell is still trying to find a door back to his home in the Fey Realm and Emily is now moved on from her encyclopedia and is trying to construct a map of the realms of fairy. She discovers the possibility of a door in the Austrian Alps so her and Wendell go off whilst navigating difficult relationships with various folk and fae and getting into lots of misadventures I am assuming. I'm hoping this book focuses a bit more on Wendell's backstory. We didn't really get that much of his backstory in the first book. We kind of were just getting to know Emily Wilde as a character and the beginnings of their relationship which is another thing I want more of in the second book. I want there to be more of a focus on the romance and that development because in the first book one of the criticisms I have is it all felt a bit rushed. I still loved it, don't get me wrong. I just, I need more. And that's not a bad criticism to give a book, <laughs> really. I have no doubt that this book is gonna be cozy and magical just like the first one. And the cover is just as beautiful. I'm so glad to get stuck right into it. That's a good thing about being the way I am and being late to the party is that once you get into something, you often find that you don't have to wait for the next thing to come out in that series because it's already out because you were late. Right, these last three books I've put on my TBR, but I'm not sure if the mood is gonna strike for these. Hopefully it does because I do want to read all these books. I just don't know if February is going to be the time I do. And the first one, <laughs> it's pretty obvious why. I bought Jonathan Strange and Mr Norell by Susanna Clark. Uh, for Christmas and I love Piranesi. It's a five star book for me, one of my favourite books of all time. So I do want to read this book desperately but 
this is scaring me this is scaring me how many pages is this oh it's got illustrations i didn't know that this is over a thousand pages long i don't remember the last time i read a book that was over a thousand pages long this is thick this is bible level thickness and that is intimidating me a lot so this is set in 1806 during the napoleonic wars and most people believe that magic has long disappeared in england until mr norell pops up reveals his magic and becomes a celebrity pretty much overnight. This is when another practicing magician comes into play. Jonathan Strange becomes Mr. Norell's student and they end up using their powers in the war against France. However, Strange becomes drawn to more dangerous forms of magic that puts his relationship with Mr. Norell at risk as well as everything else in his life. I've only heard good things about this book. I loved Piranesi. So I think I will love it, but it's just so intimidating. But I, I have a feeling, I think it's time. I think it's time. The next book I hadn't heard of until earlier this year, <laughs> we're in January, earlier this month. It's called Delicate Dream Department Store, The Dream You Ordered Has Sold Out by Mia Lee. That title is a mouthful. So this book takes place in a kind of fantasy dream world, which visitors, both human and animal, visit in their sleeps to buy whatever dream they want that night. And this book follows the people who work in this department store, specifically Penny, who is a new hire, who when one of the most sought after and most expensive dreams is stolen, has to navigate and figure out the inner workings of this strange world. This just sounds so unique and magical. I'm so interested in seeing what that's about because the description of it is quite vague. The world just seems so baffling in the best way. I think this is going to be really really good. I just can't believe I had only heard of it earlier this month. I don't know if I'm just completely in the dark or if it's not as well known. I think this it says it's a Korean number one bestseller so I think definitely well known in South Korea then but I just hadn't heard of it. And finally the last book that I'm hoping to get around to is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell which I think came out last year. It's a thriller which follows popular podcaster Alex who bumps into a woman called Josie on her birthday who turns out to have the same birthday as her, their birthday twins. And a few days later, they bump into each other again and Josie tells Alex that she has listened to her podcast and she thinks that she should be the subject matter for her next series. Alex is drawn into Josie, even though she finds her a bit unsettling, but she agrees to start making her podcast about Josie's life. And then suddenly Josie disappears and Alex finds that she herself has become the subject of her true crime podcast. I think this sounds really good. I've seen a couple of YouTubers that I watch read this book and they really enjoyed it. So I'm I'm putting this on the list in the 50-50 chance that I don't get on with the Fury. I think I have a higher chance of liking this thriller. So if I don't like the Fury, I think I'm definitely gonna like this because I, I want to read a good thriller this month. So that's that. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've got some good picks coming up in February that you're excited to read and that you're feeling a bit more decisive than I am. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week. Bye! Bye.